All right, you did a perfect job on uh, the first part of this activity, finding the slant height of the cone. We can see that we made a right triangle here. And with right triangles, we can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So you realize that this was 2, not 4, right, because it's half. So um, we have 6 squared plus 2 squared equals the slant height squared. So you found that perfect job. Okay, now find the angle formed between the base and the slant height. So let's look back up here. The base and the slant height. All right, so um, here we have our triangle. Here's the angle they want to find. Here's the base and here's the slant height. So we'll call that angle X. Now this is 2 and this is 6. And so we need to use a trig function to figure out what that angle is since you have two sides of the right triangle. So if we're going to use trig, we're either going to use, I don't know if you've used this acronym, uh, SOKOTOA. Okay, this is sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. This is cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And this is tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So we need to figure out which of these three we're going to use if we want to try to find this angle. We have the opposite side here, and we have the adjacent side here, so that's going to be tangent. So we're trying to find the tangent of x equals 6 over 2, so you'll need to use some inverse trig right here to find that angle. Okay, now let's draw a picture for this one here. So two line segments are the slant height. Um, you want to find the um, measure of the angle formed between the two segments. So. Here we have our cone. These are the two slant heights they're talking about. Let's draw our little triangle again. So it wants to know what this angle is right here. Okay, so we know this is a right angle, and we just found what this angle is. That was angle X from our other problem. So this is 90 degrees, this is going to be a certain amount of degrees, and this is what we don't know. So to find that one, we know that every triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So if we subtract the 90, and then we subtract the x, that will give us our unknown angle right here. Okay, we'll go over a couple of these, of these problems as well. So um, the main thing about vectors is that there is a change in x, and there is a change in y, and this creates a right angle, and that's how we're able to find this. So like it said here, the change here was 3. The change here was what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so we would be able to use uh, Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find that vector. And so if we were to do that, we know that our vector squared equals, um, or let's, let's just do 3 squared plus 5 squared equals the vector squared. So 9 plus 25 equals the vector squared. So that is 34 equals the vector squared. So the square root of 34 would be equal to our vector right here, our magnitude of our vector. Um, so that is how we would be able um, to find the vector there when the horizontal change is x and the vertical change is y. Um, we would do something like this, right? Um, x squared plus y squared equals the vector squared. And then for this one here, all we need to do is just talk about trig now in terms of this right triangle that we made. Um, the direction, so the direction is this angle right here, so that unknown angle is angle A. And so what we would have, we would have an X and a Y here and here. And so um, just like in the previous task, um, we would either be using so, ka, or toa. So if we look here, this angle, we know the opposite side and we know the adjacent side. So in this case, it would be the tangent of A is equal to the opposite, which is Y, over the adjacent, which is X.